Now let's solve this problem. In this problem, we are given that a drawbridge is being raised by a cable EI, right? So this is the cable EI. And it is said that the four joint loadings shown result from the weight of the roadway. So these forces are given and it is said that determine the forces in members E, F, D, E, D, F, C, D and F, G. So let's say that the tension in this E, I cable is acting like this, right? So let's say this is that E, I force. And let's say that our X axis is parallel to this E, D line, right? So let's say that this is our X axis direction. Right, and let's say that the y axis is parallel to this line, right? So let's say that this is our y axis, right? Now we will consider the whole truss and we will find this EI force, right? So if we apply the summation of moment at point A equals to 0, so then if we resolve this EI force into its components, right? So it will have two components since this EI is making 50 degrees with this X axis is right so it will have one component in this direction and similarly this EI will have one component along the Y direction right this one is the cos component and this one is the sine component right so now as we can see that this cos component is producing the moment about this point A in the counterclockwise directions right so let's say that the counterclockwise moment is positive so this cos component of EI is producing counterclockwise moment. So we will write EI cos of 50 degrees into the perpendicular distance from that point A. So this cos uh, component of this EI is 3.2 meters away from this point A, right? So this is the perpendicular distance of this cos component, right? So we will multiply this with 3.2. Similarly, this sine component, this is E i sine of 50 degrees. So this sine component is again producing the clockwise moment about a counterclockwise moment about this point A. So we will write plus and this will be E i sine of 50 degrees and the perpendicular distance between this component and that point A is this much. This is 4 plus 4 plus 4, right? So this is 12 let me complete a triangle here right so let's say that we have this triangle right so the perpendicular distance of this 8 kilonewton force from that point a is the base of this triangle right and the hypotenuse of this triangle is this ad length and that ad length is 12 meter right so this the perpendicular distance of this 8 kilonewton force from that point a is 12 cos of 20 degree right since this AD, this hypotenuse is making 20 degrees with this horizontal line, right? So we will write that this is producing clockwise moment. So we will write minus 8 into 12 cos of 20 degrees, right? Similarly, this 16 kilonewton force is producing again the clockwise moment. So we will write minus this is 16 and the perpendicular distance of this 16 kilonewton force from that point A is this much. Let's say that this is C dash. This point is let's say C dash, right? So this A C dash is the perpendicular distance, right? So for this, we can consider this distance. We can consider A C C dash triangle, right? So the hypotenuse of this triangle is 8, right? So for 16 kilonewton, the perpendicular distance is 8 cos of 20 degrees. And similarly, we can the perpendicular distance of this 6 kilonewton force from that point A is this. This is the hypotenuse, right? So 4 cos of 20. And this 16 kilonewton force is again producing the clockwise moment. So we will write minus, and this is 16, and this will be 4 cos of 20 degrees, and this will be equal to 0. Now, when we simplify this equation, so we get 11.25 EI minus 270.63 and this is equal to 0 and from this EI, the force in this EI cable is 24.06 kilonewton. Now, since we know this EI force, so now we can apply the, we can solve and we can start the solution from that joint E, right? So, let me write that at 
joint E. Right. So now at joint E, this E I force is known. Right. The, the magnitude of this E I is twenty four point zero six kilo newton. Right. So now we can draw the free body diagram at this joint E. So let's say that the force in this E F member is acting towards that joint E. Let's say this is that E F force. Right. And this is that E I force, which is making fifty degrees. Right, this angle is fifty degrees, and this E D force is let's say acting away from this joint, right? So let's say that this is that E D force which is parallel to the y axis, is right? So we can write that this is E D, this is E F, and this one is E I, which is twenty four point zero six kilo newton, right? And this is our x and y direction. Remember. So now, if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to zero, so now as we can see that this E F is acting in the positive direction, so we will write E F, E F, and this uh, E I force will have one component in the negative x direction, right? It will have one component like this, so that will be the cos component. So we will write minus twenty four point zero six. Cos of fifty degrees, and this will be equal to zero. So from this, E F equals to fifteen point four six kilo newton. As we can see, that this E F force is acting towards the joint E, right? So this means that this is compressive force, right? Similarly, if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero, so as we can see that this uh, E I force, this twenty four point zero six kilonewton force, will have a, one component which will be acting in the positive y direction. So we will write that this is twenty four point zero six sine of fifty degrees minus this E D, right? So we will write this as E D equals to zero. So from this. This E D or D E force is eighteen point four three kilonewton, right? So I will write that this is eighteen point four three kilonewton, and this is acting away from the joint E. So this is the tension force, right? Now we will proceed the solution at joint D. So I will write at that at joint D. So now at joint D again we have this E D force which is known, right? And that E D force is eighteen point four three. So let me draw the free body diagram. So let's say that C D force is acting towards that joint D, and this E D force is the tension force. So it will be acting away from this joint. This is the E D, and this is eighteen point four three kilonewton, right? And let's say that this D F force is acting away. Let's say this is the D F force, and this eight kilonewton force is acting vertically downward, right? This is eight kilonewton. This is given, right? And this is eighteen point four three kilonewton. So now we need to have this angle theta, right? So this angle. So now, if we apply tan theta to this small triangle, so from this tan theta will be equal to perpendicular. So perpendicular distance is three point two divided by this four meters, and theta will be equal to tan inverse of this ratio. So from this, that theta is thirty eight point six five degrees. So this means that this D F force is making. Thirty-eight point six five degrees with the x-axis, right? Since our x-axis is is in this direction, and this is that C D force, right? Now, if we apply the summation of forces along y-axis is equal to zero at joint D, summation of forces along y-axis is equals to zero. So now, as we can see, that this D F force will have uh, one component in this direction, that is in the positive y direction, 
right so we will write that this is df sin of 38.65 degrees this is also acting in the positive y direction so i will write plus 18.43 right and this 8 kN force will have two components along x and y since our x axis is like this and y axis is acting in this direction right so then we have to find the angle of this 8 kN force so now as we can see that here we are given this 20 degree angle right so if i draw a horizontal line here so this cd force is making 20 degrees with the horizontal right so this angle is 20 degree and now if i draw a line here this line is parallel to the y axis is right so if this 8 kN force is perpendicular with this horizontal line and this line is perpendicular with this line right so this means that if this angle is 20 degrees so then this angle is also 20 degrees so this means that this 8 kN force is making 20 degrees with the negative y axis right so now we can resolve this 8 kN force into its components right so it will have one component in this direction right so we can write that this will be minus 8 and this is the cos component right? so we will write 8 cos of 20 degrees and this will be equal to 0 now when we solve this so this df force is minus 17.47 kilonewton right so this minus sign means that this df force is compressive force right since this is acting away from this joint d but according to this negative sign this is acting towards this giant d right so we can write that df force is 17.47 kilonewton and this is compressive force similarly if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to zero so as we can see that this df force will have one component in the positive x direction like this sorry it will have one component in the negative x direction right since it is acting away in the negative x direction right so it will have one component in this direction and that is the cos component and now we know the df magnitude which, which is 17.47 so i will write that this is minus 17.47 cos of 38.65 then this cd force is acting in the positive x direction so i will write plus cd and then this 8 kN force will have one component in the negative x direction right it will have one component like this and this is the sine component right so we will write minus 8 sine of 20 degrees and this will be equal to 0 and since uh, from here we get df equals to minus 17.47 right so if we reverse the direction of this df force so then this cos component of this df force will be acting in the opposite direction right that is in the positive x direction so we have to multiply this whole with the minus sign right since the actual direction of df is opposite to this one right so this will become positive right so when we solve this so cd force is minus 10.90 kilonewton right so this means that cd force is here we have shown that cd force is acting towards giant d but this negative sign means that it it must be acting in the opposite direction right so this means that cd force is acting away from the giant d so this magnitude is 10.90 kilonewton and if it is acting away from giant d so then this is tension force right next we will continue the solution at joint f right so let me draw the free body diagram of these forces at joint f right so let's say this is that f point so we have this ef force and ef force is compressive force so this will be acting towards this uh, joint f right so let me draw that ef force this is compressive right and the magnitude of this ef force is 15.46 kilonewton similarly if we consider that this gf force is acting towards this giant f as well right so let me draw that as well so let's say this is the gf force 
and let's say that cf force is acting away this is that cf force and then that df force so we know the magnitude of this df force this is compressive force so it will be acting towards this joint f right so this will be that df force and we know that this df force is making 38.65 degrees so if this is 38.65 so then this angle is also 38.65 so this means that this df force which is 17.47 is making 38.65 degrees right now if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 at this joint f so as we can see that this cf is acting in the negative y direction so i will write minus cf and then this 17.47 kilonewton force will have one component in the positive y direction right it will have one component like this and that is the sine component if we consider this angle right so we can write that this will be plus 17.47 sine of 38.65 degrees and this will be equal to 0. So now from this Cf equals to 10.91 kilonewton and as we can see that this Cf force is acting away from this joint F so this means that this is the tension force right. Similarly, if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0, so as we can see that this gf force is acting in the positive x direction, so I will write gf and this 15.46 kN force is acting in the negative x direction, so we will write it as minus, minus 15.46 and similarly this 17.47 kN force will have one component in the negative x direction, right? and this is the cos component right so we will write minus 17.47 cos of 38.65 and this will be equal to 0 so when we solve this so then this gf force or fg force is equal to 29.10 kilonewton and since this fg force is acting towards the joint f so this means that this is the compressive force right so now we know the forces in all the members which were required right so this is the solution of this particular problem